The first lesson is found in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning with verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. The word of the Lord. The psalm is found in Psalm 118, beginning with verse 25. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks forever to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John's gospel, chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Let's pray. Father, thank you for gathering us here in your house today. Thank you for the reminder that this is a day when we raise our hands in the air and we too shout out, Hosanna, because we know that means save us. And it is only through your Son that we can be saved, that we can be rescued, that we have hope. So Jesus, come and send the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to receive your truth. As you take me out of your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Palm Sunday. One of our favorite times of the year, right? When we get to come and and see the kids walking around with the palms. It really does gladden our heart, right? I was thinking about how many times I've been to Palm Sunday, and I think I've come up with this is my 23rd Palm Sunday. I asked Rich earlier in the week how, long he, how many times he'd come. I think he's been here, been to Palm Sunday 66 times. What about you? Anybody beat 66? Come on. No? Okay, so how many, this is your first Palm Sunday. Ah, we have one, yeah. How about five years? Five times, ten times? Raise your hand. There you go. What about 20 years? Anybody been 20 years? Okay, I'm going to nominate you. You get to come up and preach today. (laughs) See, I figure if you've been to Palm Sunday as many Sundays as I have, or like uh, we had 84, right? 84 at the 8 o'clock service. I figure you can do this as well as I can. Is there anything new about Palm Sunday that we can come today and listen and hear and find out? I bet some of you were thinking, "Ah, I've heard it before. I can zone out. Take it easy today. But let me tell you, the more I prayed about this, the more I realized that God's got a message for us today. He's got a message for us today because in this powerful book called the Bible, God's love story for us from Genesis to Revelation, God's got a message for us today. 
His message is, come and see. His message is, come and behold, come and experience the power of our God. In our first, in our gospel reading this morning, we heard that. John tells us that as Jesus was coming, the, crowd, the people began to hear it. And they began to gather so that they could come and see him. John tells us that some in the crowd knew exactly who he was because they had been with Martha and Mary the day that Jesus had raised their brother from the dead. There were others in the crowd, however, that didn't know who he was, and so they began to ask, who is this? Who is this? What a simple yet complex question. It is a Palm Sunday kind of question. It's a question that drives us to come every Palm Sunday and to remember, to remember that our God is the same yesterday and he's the same today and he will be the same tomorrow and throughout eternity. And our God is powerful. Our God is all knowing. And if God did it back then, God's doing it now and he will do it again for us. Our Palm Sunday experiences are meant to remind us that our God is the same God who spoke in the beginning of time, and he is peace, calmed the raging chaos. Our God is the same God whose light lit up creation when he said, let there be light, and there was light. Our God is the same God who breathed into the nostrils of Adam, and he came to life. Our God is the same God who then walked in the garden in the cool of the day with Adam and his wife Eve, telling them about his love, teaching them about the plans that he had for him, them and for his creation. Our God is the same God who then confronted their rebellion after they sinned. And in that confrontation, he promised them and he promises us that there would come a day when he would send a son, and not just any old son, this would be God's own son, his only son, to strike, to be struck on the heel by Satan. And yet, this same son, God's only begotten son, would crush the head of Satan, and he would defeat the enemies of God. Our God is the same God. He's the same God who then made a covenant with a man named Abraham, promising to make him into a great nation that would bless all the peoples of the world, and he did it. Our God is the same God that around 1400 BC heard the cries of his people as they were in bondage and slavery and tyranny and Egypt, and he, he went to a man named Moses and he said, go set my people free. He's the same God who listened to Moses as he stood on the banks of the Red Sea watching God destroy the Egyptian army. And as he did that, Moses sang out, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. These are words that King David around 1044 BC repeated in Psalm 118 when he again says, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Our God is the same God who also inspired David to write, Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has made his light shine on us with bows in hand. Join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. Our God is the same God yesterday, today, and throughout eternity. Our God is the same God who came to his prophet Zechariah in around 500 B.C., and he told Zechariah, tell the world that one day my people are going to be in Jerusalem and they are going to have palm branches and they're going to be crying out, Hosanna, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord as my son will be riding into Jerusalem. And praise God, 500 years later, it happened. Our God is the same God. He's the same God who sent John the Baptist to the Jordan River one day, so that when he saw Jesus, 
he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he invited people to go and to see who this Jesus was. And I don't know about you, but it is so cool that all of this stuff is connected. To me, it's really excited how it was all predicted, how it was all arranged, how it was all put into motion by our God who fulfilled all of his promises so that today on Palm Sunday, you and I could be gathered as a people of God into the house of God so we could remember the power of our God, the mercy of our God, the faithfulness of our God. And this year of all Palm Sundays, we need that, right? I don't know about you, but the world sure seems to be on fire and chaotic right now. And in this out-of-control world, I need to gather here with all of you, and I need to be reminded of the power of our God. Because not only are things going on in the world, but things are going on in all of our personal lives as well. And we need to know who Jesus is. We need to remember the faithfulness of God who still invites all of us and still invites all of the world to come and see. To come and experience Jesus our Savior and Lord because he will change your life if you come and you spend time with him. Two of John's disciples found that out the day after he, John the Baptist had said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Two of his disciples went to Jesus who invited them to come and to see and they spent the day with him. And they were so transformed by spending a day with Jesus that they immediately went to their homes and their fam family and friends and they said, We found the Christ. Come and meet the man that I met. And he will change your life too. And throughout the Gospels, this, that's what happened. People met Jesus who said, I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the bread of life. I'm the living water. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm him. And when we meet our Jesus... Our lives are changed just like those disciples. And we too run to our families and say, come and see the man. Come and see the Lord. Come and see my God who changed me. And he can do the same for you. Our God has called us today as his people to come to his house. To come and to see. To come and behold. To come and to follow Jesus this Palm Sunday you and I have come because we too, whether we know him or not, we too still cry out, Hosanna, come and save us. We've come this morning to raise our hands and praise our God who still rescues. He still wants us to come and wave our palm branches in the air and declare to the world that when you cry out, save me, he hears you, he sees you, and he runs to you. So yes, today we have come to say, Jesus, save us. God is inviting us on this Palm Sunday to remember that from the fall of mankind, God's children have constantly been struggling to find him. We have been constantly striving to find God's love, but on our own we have not been able to do it. We've constantly been falling into a state of hopelessness. And Jesus knew that. He knew that without him, we were not going to be able to be saved because on our own, we cannot fix what we broke. Jesus came that first, came into Jerusalem that first Palm Sunday because he knew that we needed him. He came into the world not to take up arms against the Romans. He didn't come into Jerusalem that day so that he could, so he could gather a bunch of people, a bunch of men to lead an armed rebellion against Rome. He came to lead a heavenly army against Satan and the forces of evil, against sin, against the devil and pain and death itself. That's why he came. Because his father promised that he would. And his father always keeps his promises. That's who our God is. John's gospel tells us Jesus knew that the time had come for him to fulfill all his father had sent him to do. Jesus knew the time had come 
because there would be no surprises for him or for God the last week of his life. And today on Palm Sunday, we raise our hands up and we are singing Hosanna and we are singing praises to our Lord and we are beginning to step into the last week of our Savior's life. And that last week, although there were no surprises for God, it is a week of hardship for our Savior and it is hard for us as well. Our Lenten journey is coming to an end and because of that, this week, we will face our own selves. We will come face to face with how we participated in Jesus going to the cross. It is a heavy week, but there are no surprises for God because God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus, his only son Jesus to the world so that All those who believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Do you believe this? Is this what motivates your life? Do the people around you know that you believe this? That Jesus is the Christ? There would be no surprises for God for he knew ahead of time that when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, he would face the parade of people shouting, Hosanna, save us. You see, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit knew this would happen. Jesus was not an unwilling participant. He did not go kicking and screaming. He went with his shoulders held high and his head held high because he knew this was the Father's will. He knew that his, this was time to fulfill what his, God, his dad had sent him to do. God knew ahead of time and he prepared for Jesus to face the showdown at the temple, to face the last supper in the upper room, to walk that walk to the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus would bow down three times before his father. Is this your will? Is there any other way? And he would pray so intently in that garden that he would bleed from every pore in his body. God the Father knew and he planned for his son to be arrested, for his son to be on trial. He knew about the torture. He knew about the whipping. He knew what it would be like to walk that long road up to the cross, carrying that cross. He knew that his son would die. Let me be very clear that God the Father was this deliberate in planning for all that would happen this week, the last week of his son's life, because God knew that Jesus' crucifixion was to be God's method of payment for the sins of the world, which include our sins. So yes, God was this deliberate in the planning for all that would happen the last week of his son's life because Jesus' crucifixion was the only thing that could reconcile all of us broken sinners with our holy and loving God. And if there were no surprises in the last week of Jesus' life, there are no surprises for God in any of the weeks of our lives as well. He is there with us. He sees us. He loves us. He walks beside us. He is Jesus, our Emmanuel. He is our God who is always with us. John says, for having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus now showed them, and he shows all of us the full extent of his love. He did it because Jesus knew that everyone standing in that crowd, whether they knew who he was or not, and he knew that every person sitting in this sanctuary today, whether we know him or not, we need him. From Adam and Eve, to the very last person who will ever be born, all of us run away from God. We reject him. We rebel against him. We listen to the voices of the world instead of the voices of God, and we need Jesus. We need his rescue. We need his saving. And Jesus knew that none of them were capable of securing their own salvation, and neither are we. Jesus knew the only hope that they had, the only hope that we have, was for him to come running after us. 
And so, yes, Jesus loved us all the way to the cross. And knowing all this was his Father's will, Jesus climbed up on the back of that donkey. That donkey that his Father had chosen for him to ride that day. And he, his love, drove him into Jerusalem. And his love drove him to the Garden of Gethsemane. His love drove him to the cross. His love drove him to the grave and to the resurrection again. His love for you did this. His love for us, his love for me did this. That first Palm Sunday as the crowd gathered in the streets of Jerusalem, they came to behold the king of the Jews riding on a donkey. And John says, some in the crowd knew him. But others ask, who is this? Such a simple yet profoundly complex question that we come face to face with every time we come to Palm Sunday and especially this year. Who is this? What is your answer? With Jesus staring at us today, what do we say to him when he asks who he is? And just as importantly, what do you and I, who hold the hope of the world in our hearts, what do we say when the world comes to us and says, who is this? Who is this Jesus you're always talking about? Who is this Jesus that you said rescued you? Who is this Jesus that you said is going to take you to heaven? Who is he? Because I'm telling you that whether they say, Hosanna, save me or not, this world is crying out, Jesus, save me. They may not even understand how to say the words, but they are looking for it. And if they do not find it in Jesus, they are going to try to find salvation some other way. They will try to find it in alcohol. They'll try to find it in drugs. They'll try to find it in sex. They'll try to find it in every other type of addiction that is raging in this world right now. They will find it in hopelessness and depression, in anxiety and fear, in anger and in pain, until they find it in Jesus. What do you say when they come running to you and ask, who is this? The crowd that gathered that first day is not any different than the crowd that gathers today because the world is saying, I really hope that this man riding on the donkey is who you say he is. I hope he's the son of God who healed the sick, who forgave the sinner, who loved the unlovable. And today people are asking you and I, is this Jesus the same Jesus that you talk about? The same Jesus you tell me to read about? Is he still the same one who gives hope to the hopeless? Does he still give mercy to the broken? Does he still forgive the sinner? Just as those people laid down their palm branches and shouted, Hosanna, that first Palm Sunday, Jesus, save me. In our generation, we gather to lay down our branches and cry out the same thing because we need him just as they did. And I don't know where you are today in your walk with Jesus. There are some among us who may not know him yet. And if you do not know him yet, today is the day to meet him, to allow him to change your life forever. Because he is here on this Palm Sunday as we remember him riding on that donkey. And he is saying to all of us, I see you. I love you. I went to the cross for you so that this morning you could surrender your life to me. And you can allow me, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to transform you. If you have already done that, if you know the Lord already, he's here this morning saying, will you rededicate yourself to me? What is it in your life that you need to relinquish over to the Lord? Is it a sin that you've just struggled with and you can't seem to get rid of? Is it... 
a pain that no matter how hard you pray, it doesn't seem to be going away? What is it that you need to surrender to the Lord today? What addiction do you need him to come and break? What shackle do you need him to come and peel off of you? What depression do you need him to lift off of you? What anxiety do you need to be healed? What physical ailment do you need Jesus to lay his hands on you today and say, body be healed? What is it? He's here today to do that for us. He's the same God that he was then, and he's the same God that he is now. If he healed then, he heals now. If he saved then, he saves now. Those first believers, they came and they laid down their palm branches. And in that, they were acknowledging that he was the son of God, but so much more. They were laying down their lives to him. They were dedicating themselves to him. And what will you lay down for Jesus today? Your possessions? Your job? your family, your spouse, your life. What do you need to bring to Jesus this morning? The choir is about to sing. No, the choir is not singing. You guys are singing. The worship team is singing. The choir was singing last time. (laughs) The worship team is about to sing. Barb's going to sing. Someone's going to sing. There's a song that's going to be sung. (laughs) There's a song that's going to be sung because the Holy Spirit needs to come and do a work among us. I'm going to invite you as you listen to the song to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what's in your heart that you need to relinquish to God. And then... When it's time, come and lay your palms down. Give it all to him. He's here to take it. Don't leave this place with the heaviness of your heart still there. Let the God who loves us come and bring his peace. Bring his mercy and bring his grace to us. Amen.